Hello there. I'm so glad that you are with me today. I welcome you. And I actually have a dream that I want to share with you today. It's not very often, actually, that I will share a dream because most of the time when I dream, and I do dream quite a bit, they often are for me or there's something for me to pray into. Occasionally, it might be specifically for somebody else. But for this dream, the Lord, I believe, wanted me to share it with you. And he actually gave it to me several weeks ago, but I was waiting on God's timing. And the Lord gave me the green light on this. How many of you know it's important to wait on God's timing. Timing is very, very critical in the kingdom of God. So in this dream, I was flying. It was a flying dream. And I love flying dreams. I get so excited when the Holy Spirit gives me a flying dream, because typically when I get a flying dream, it means that I am about ready to accelerate in the things of the Spirit. I'm about ready to go up to another level in the realm of the Spirit. And so this was one of those dreams. It was a flying dream. But there was something very different about this dream in that everything was dark. Every time over the years, whenever the Holy Spirit has given me a flying dream, it's always been in the daylight, never in the dark, always in the daylight. But this one, it was dark. And I knew that I knew when I was flying that it was necessary to fly because in the darkness, there was great danger. In the darkness, there was tremendous warfare. In the darkness, there was a lot of stuff going on that nobody wanted to be stuck in. So in this dream, flying was necessary because walking like a mere mortal was dangerous. It was dangerous. And so it was necessary to fly above all of the turmoil and destruction and dangers that I could tell were happening in that thick darkness. And I really felt like the Lord was emphasizing this distinction that was being made in this dream. Okay. There was the distinction of above and beneath and the distinction of light and darkness, and a distinction, listen, of flesh and spirit, of flesh and spirit. Because as believers, we have the capacity to either operate out of the flesh, and I, what I mean by that is just by the mere natural abilities and intellect and perception that we have as human beings, or we have the privilege of operating from this higher level, which I would call the glory realm, the heavenly realm, the realm of the spirit. We have the option on any given day at any given time to be operating out of one of those two places. And the Lord is emphasizing how necessary it is for the times that we are living in to go from just operating like mere humans to operating out of the realm of the spirit, because in the realm of the spirit, which is the kingdom of God, the glory realm, okay, the, the heavenly realm of God, from that realm, there are resources. There's an entire kingdom that we have access to. Not only that, but it's an entirely different vantage point that we're given from that realm. Now, I want to read to you a passage before I share just a couple more aspects to this dream. I want to read to you a passage out of Colossians chapter 3, verses 1 through 3. And I have to tell you, probably over a decade ago, the Lord used this passage to radically, and I do mean radically, bring transformation into my life, okay, because of what he revealed to me through this. So this has been a very significant passage in my own personal life. I'm just going to bring out a small part of it today. We don't have time to go into it super deep. So Colossians 3, verse beginning in verse 1, if then you were raised with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ is sitting at the right hand of God, Set your mind on things above, not on the things of the earth. For you died and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is our life, appears, then you will also appear with him in glory. So I want you to see that in this passage, there is something that Paul tells us to do, something he tells us not to do, and then he tells us why. 
So he tells us to seek those things which are above, to set our mind on those things above. And then he says, not the things of the world. And then he says, why? Because your life is in Christ, meaning you're already there with Christ now. Now, sometimes people read these passages and they think that it's talking about dreaming about, thinking about, meditating on that one day we're going to go to be with the Lord. And that's why we're to set our mind on things above and value um, this eternity that we're going to be stepping into. And though I would say that might be part of it, that's not the primary admonition that Paul is giving us here. What he's doing is he's calling us to come up higher. He's calling us to shift our perspective. He's calling us to, instead of looking and operating from mere natural not only a natural perspective, but natural resources to come up higher, to set our mind on things above, to seek those things which are above. In other words, I'm looking at Lord, you're already there and I am seated there with you. We are connected by the spirit of God. The kingdom of God is within me. And this kingdom is a kingdom of abundance. This kingdom is a kingdom of provision. This kingdom gives me a whole different vantage point than what I have in the natural realm. This realm gives us access to things that we do not have access to in the natural realm. Now, the realm of darkness, which comes from that second heaven, from the dominion of Satan influencing this world, that realm of darkness, I mean, it is darkness, it is destruction, it is, it is lack, it is pain, it is poverty. But the realm of light, the realm of the spirit, the kingdom of God, it's a realm of light. It's a realm of goodness. It's a realm of provision. Amen. And so what he's saying is we need to come up higher to see what is available to us in the realm of the spirit of God, which is the parent realm. It's the realm that everything came from. It is more real than this natural world. Now, I do want to say the second thing that I want to mention about this dream that I had. So I'm flying and it's dark, it's deep darkness. But because I was flying, the darkness below could not touch me. It couldn't touch me. There was a clear distinction and distance between the two, which means this, I could see the darkness, but I did not have to react to it. I knew that there was danger and all of that happening in that darkness, but I did not have to react to it. It had no hold on me. And this is one of the reasons that I feel like the Lord wants to minister this to us today, is he wants to remind us that the darkness that we're seeing actually does not have to have a hold. We don't have to react to the darkness. We get to respond from the realm of light. We get to respond from the realm of the spirit. We get to respond from the realm of the kingdom. Let's just say that your boss gave you a pink slip. I don't know if any of you remember. I don't think they do this anymore. It's just an old phrase that that means you were given a notice to be terminated. Okay, like you're losing your job. And so when they would give you a pink slip, it meant that you only had so many days or so much time before you had to be out of there, right? So let's say your boss gives you notice that your job is being terminated. Now, the first thing that you may do is to go into a little bit of a panic mode, right? Your mind starts racing. But here's what the Lord wants us to get today. Any problem, any situation, any challenge that we are faced with, we have an opportunity to come and respond or react, to react or respond. We're going to react out of the natural, okay, out of this realm, the earthly realm, or we're going to respond out of seeking those things which are above, setting our mind on those things above, out of the kingdom realm, out of the realm of the Holy Spirit, out of the glory realm. When you respond out of the glory realm, this means that you're hearing from the Lord and the Lord will give you wisdom, supernatural wisdom and insight into what is going on here. Now, he may tell you, hey, this is a demonic scheme and you need to take authority over it. And you can because you are seated in Christ in heavenly places. And so you have authority over the schemes of the enemy. You have authority to cancel them. You have authority to stop them. Or he may tell you, listen, I'm closing this door so that I can open a better door. 
Okay. In either of those cases, you're not going to be in a panic. You're not going to be in fear. You're not going to be in anxiety. You're not going to be warring against people. Why? Because you have been taken up to a higher realm. You're doing this thing from a higher realm. You have a whole different vantage point with a whole different access to different kinds of resources. And God is not in short supply today. And so the Lord was showing me in this dream that I was above the darkness so I didn't have to react to it. I wasn't subjected to it. I didn't have to be tormented by it because I was above it. And this is what will happen for you, my friend, when you're operating from the realm of the spirit, which God is calling us into more and more. Now, Here's the other thing. The other part of this dream is that when I was flying, I was flying at a very fast speed. I mean, an accelerated speed. Normally when I've had flying dreams, there's times that I felt like I was struggling to get off the ground, to get going. Sometimes I've had a flying dream where I felt like I was barely moving along and I wasn't accelerating at a great rate. But in this dream, I was moving fast fast. And I felt like the Lord wanted me to say to you that some of you have felt like you're a little behind in these, in this area. And the Lord says, if you will set your mind on things above, if you will seek those things that are above, God is going to begin to accelerate you in this hour, in the things of the Holy Spirit, in learning how to actually do life by the Spirit, how to be led by the Spirit. You know, the scriptures say that those who are led by the Spirit are the sons of God, meaning that this is God's design for us. We're supposed to be led. We're supposed to be living out of. We're supposed to be operating out of this union with the Holy Spirit. Now, I want to read one more passage to you before I close. This passage right here, I believe, gives us further instruction on how to soar. You know, one of the theme words that God gave me for this year is to soar in 2024. So he keeps bringing this back again and again and again. And in Isaiah chapter 40, beginning in verse 29, he says he gives power to the weak and to those who have no might, he increases strength. Even the youth shall faint and be weary and the young men shall utterly fall. But those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up, or that word could also be translated soar. They shall soar with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. I want you to realize that from this passage, he's talking about the difference between natural strength and supernatural strength. Okay. Many of you have been in some long battles and you are feeling weary and the Lord says it's time to come and wait on him. Okay. Now waiting on him isn't about sitting idle and, and saying, well, God's just going to take care of it. I'm just waiting on God to take care of it. No waiting on him. Really. It's about ministering to the Lord. That word, one of the uh, root words for wait is a word that means to bind together with to bind together with. It means that there's a bonding that's going on. And why are we bonding with the Lord so we can move like one, so we can move as one. And when you move as one with him, when you bond yourself to him through intimacy, through the word, through spending time in worship and prayer, through learning the ways of the spirit, okay? When you bond with him, guess what? His strength becomes your strength. His power becomes your power. His resources become your resources. His wisdom becomes your wisdom. It's all available to us. Now, he has to lead. That's why we have the Holy Spirit. We're to be led of the Spirit. But everything that he is and everything that he has now becomes our portion. And so waiting on the Lord is the key to experiencing his strength, is is the key to having your strength renewed. It's the key to soaring with him to new heights. And I believe, my friend, this is what God is calling us to in this hour because we need our strength renewed and we don't need natural strength. We need supernatural strength to accomplish the assignments and the mission of God that is currently on our 
life. And so God is calling you, my friend today, he's calling you to come up higher. He's calling you to soar with him. He's calling you to fly above the darkness. He's calling you to seek those things that are above, to set your mind on those things above. Don't process things by a mere natural or fleshly impulse. Don't react to the things that you're seeing. God is going to give you a different vantage point so that you can see clearly into that darkness. You can see clearly into that chaos. You can see clearly into that confusion and you can begin to take authority over it because you are seated with Christ in heavenly places. God has called you, my friend, to reign with him to reign with him through Christ Jesus. And how do we do that? By the spirit of the living God. This is the word of the Lord for us today. I know there's kind of a lot to ponder and consider here, but essentially what God is saying to you is he's calling you to fly with him. He's calling you to come up higher with him. And I know that you're listening to this today because that's exactly what you desire to do. And so today I just release over you today a fresh level of increase and acceleration in the things of the Holy Spirit a fresh level of increase and acceleration in the things of the Holy Spirit. You are going to higher places in Christ Jesus. You are going to be flying, soaring in the Holy Spirit. And God is going to take you to some new levels so you can have a whole new vantage point in this season with renewed strength and renewed energy to handle the assignments that God has entrusted to you. This is the word of the Lord for us today, my friend. It's a little bit different, but I pray that it encourages you and strengthens your faith in the name of Jesus. I look forward to being back again with you soon. God bless.